Well, thanks for having us. Um, you know, uh, the way we structured this is we'll talk about marketing first, but usually that's going uh, supporting sales. And that's the way I look at it, at least that that's what marketing's purpose is, is to support sales um, at the end of the day. So, um, so this is our uh, uh, who, who are we slide and it sort of, I think Steve pretty much covered it. Um, you know, I work as a fractional chief marketing officer, a direct director of marketing for companies because, you know, for uh, half of the cost of hiring somebody, we can bring in a much higher level of experience. We've literally worked with hundreds and hundreds of clients and thousands of, of assignments. Um, we do marketing execution plans and research and we, we provide management. Um, so a lot of different things that we do. Marketing is very multifaceted, but we help figure out what's broken and how to fix it. Um, gotten a lot of nice press. But that's not because I'm a genius, because I do publicity as well, and I do it for myself. Um, so I'll turn it over to Robert. Yeah, so uh, very much the same uh, role as uh, uh, Pete, but focusing on the sales management. Uh, the value proposition I bring to the business owners of the small and mid-sized businesses is not really being the advisory consultant who is going to bring you the booklet and uh, forcing you to read it through and start, you know, doing those things yourselves. This is about me stepping in, rolling up the sleeves and re really doing the things uh, for you guys. So this is about set setting up the sales infrastructure. And if you like managing that as a fractional VP of sales. So pretty much, you know, uh, synchronized with what Pete is doing, we are providing the entire portfolio from A to Z when it comes to generating leads and really closing them and uh, building the uh, order books for you. Awesome. Look at those nice pictures too. <laughs> especially, so, yours. especially mine. My wife took that, Heidi Designs. She does a great yeah, job. Miracles. She made me look at least 10 years younger. Um, so, you know, Robert and I talked a lot about why, and, and we went back and forth on this, but these are the things that we really came up with. The economy is reopening at an unbelievable pace, and, and we're just seeing it everywhere, even though they might be saying August or some people are saying never again. Uh, but the reality is people are, you know, the, the demand for services and, and the different kinds of business, it didn't go anywhere. It just became pent up. And so we're seeing that come out. So massive opportunity. Um, and it will alternate. Yeah, the only healthy opportunity any business does have is to grow, to grow and to grow. Those businesses that you believe that they are feel comfortable with, just stalled top line, let's be honest, it's just a matter of a couple of years that you are going to come across problems you need to solve in your companies. You need to have the cost cutting exercise. So it's really our uh, responsibility running our businesses to make sure that we are having the continuous and sustainable growth. And this is something you'll hear us, you know, referencing probably quite a bit during this, this, you know, as, as Robert and I have worked together, we've realized that this is part of our mantra is you, you, you can't, you're not going to grow without a plan. And we'll talk about what, yeah. what, what a plan is uh, and all that, but it's just one of those hard facts. A good friend of mine said, Planning is like eating your vegetables. No one wants to eat their vegetables. Building websites and doing advertising, and that's the dessert. And your mom told you you not you can't eat your dessert until after you've eaten your vegetables. And so that's what the plan is all about. Absolutely. I always like that. Eat your vegetables. <laughs> And this is not about just, you know, learning and having some academic discussions, but this is really about putting everything, what we are going to speak uh, about together with, T, uh, with Pete into actions and really start doing these things. And guys, you can do that everything yourself. So let's yeah. get that. Yeah, we hope that, you know, we, part of our mission is to, is to tell people, look, you don't need us. Uh, this stuff isn't rocket science. There's a, there's a lot of pieces to it. And the cool thing is, you know, because like I've owned my own companies for so long, you know, we've never had tons of money. We've had to do things ourselves. Um, yeah. And we brought in expertise in areas that we don't have, but we usually have the marketing part figured out. Um, so who are you? Um, small to medium business, frustrated by flat or declining revenues. Um, 
or sometimes you're just not growing as fast as, as you want. You're maybe not growing to plan, right? Um, recovering from the pandemic impact, trying to make up for lost revenue and time. This one is interesting because both Robert and I said the same thing when we were planning this, worried about referrals and word of mouth being not enough. All of our business comes from referrals. We we hear that sometimes. It's usually followed by it's not working as well. Um, That's extremely strong because uh, when you get the strong referral, then you sit immediately uh, in front of the decision maker and you are going to have very likelihood that you are going to get the order. But you cannot control those referrals. You don't know if you get them, when you get them, from whom you get them, and how many. So I think that this is also very important to have a, a two-pronged approach and be more proactive. Yeah, it's uh, it that's you know referrals can definitely work and but but recognize that they're passive. Um, confused by sales and marketing technology, I think that that covers a lot of people these days. It's become very complex, um, and concern you can't afford or find the talent you need to grow. And especially finding talent. I think Robert can kind of speak to that. Yeah. So, you know, marketing, if marketing is the blood of the organization, sales is the heart. And I think there's a real relationship there. And in a 2020 survey by Gartner, it said 90% of these of small businesses, and their, their definition is pretty broad. You know, it, it, it includes businesses with 50, $60 million as a small business, but uh, it goes all the way down to a few hundred thousand in revenue, but 90% uh, said they're falling short of their marketing goals. And if that's not bad enough. Yeah, then it's even worse because 85% of small and mid-sized businesses are falling short on sales goals. It's very difficult to develop your business, to grow your business in a uh, kind of you know, controllable way if you don't have goals. If you don't know where you want to go, which way are you going to choose? Which tools, which means, have goals. Have goals, right. We want to grow. Okay. What does that mean? So I don't know how we do this. Um, if everybody's muted, I was going to ask people what, what name some things that are marketing. I suppose we could do it in the chat field. Yeah. Or can people yeah, just... we can enable chat. So what I'd like to do, if, if it doesn't uh, derail us or anything, is I'll start in the chat and I'll say... Uh, How about direct mail, Pete? Direct mail, print ad. So what is marketing? Website. Great. Social oh, yes. Media. Everybody's on top of it. Look at that. See, it's funny. Now in Zoom, everyone knows how to use chat. At first, it was like, <laughs> where's the chat? Everything that is customer facing. Very good. Jeff's cheating though, because he's a marketing guy. Connecting with people. Oh, interesting. TV, word of mouth, print. Okay, awesome. Word of mouth, yeah. Under Ooh, Mike. Mike wins the prize. All right, cool. Everything. I like that word. I like that one too. So so this is a slide I put together. So the first thing I want to say is. Marketing comes under the strategy part of the equation, strategy and tactics being different. I mean, to me, it sounds like this is something that everybody kind of knows. It's always repeated ad nauseum, but everybody still gets confused about it. So, you know, these are military terms. Most of the marketing terminology actually comes from the military. A campaign is from military strategy, tactics, target, you know, all these things, um, all from the military and, uh, so the strategy is, this is according to Admiral Wiley, the plan of action designed in order to achieve some end, a purpose together with a system of measures for its accomplishment. I think that's a great, uh, <laughs> Mike is a show off. Um, that's, a, that's a great way to put it. It's a little bit academic, but it really is, it's, it's deciding which country to invade, how many troops are we going to send, what are the outcomes that we're looking for, um, all of those things. Tactics, on the other hand, according to the U.S. Army Training Manual, study of most effective ways of securing objectives set by the strategy in deploying and directing troop ship to aircraft against the enemy. So that's strat tactics get down to what type of weaponry, how much ammunition. I don't know if people know this, but almost every mission, the gear is different, right? 
all depends on what the strategy is. So it's really important that the strategy comes before the tactics. So these things, and I hate to be harsh with anyone, but they're not strategy, they're tactics. And, and so by definition, it's not really marketing. They're marketing tactics. They're part of marketing. But I think a huge thing that I see a lot that, that really people struggle with is they're, they're buying different tactics. We need a website. We need a, we're going to do an email campaign. We're going to do advertising. Inevitably, they're not very pleased with what happens, and it's because they're putting the cart before the horse. And it's hard because you want to eat those vegetables, right? I mean, you want to eat the dessert, but you gotta, you got to step back and eat those vegetables. So tactics versus, market, uh, tactics versus strategy. Excuse me. <coughs> very important. Um, and it's hard because that's in an ideal world. In the real world, sometimes we have to attack two things at once. There's, you've got some fires burning, and we just tell people, look, yes, let's fix that website. It's killing you. But let's start building the strategy that can take into account everything that we're doing. So everything's integrated together. Everything is fueling everything else. The Marines have a term for it, force multiplication. Um, once you get everything running as a system, um, it, it performs incredibly. Uh, we see easily 10x return on, on the programming that we do, and that's usually on the low end. But without a plan, honestly, we, we probably can't even help you if you don't have a plan. Rob, you want to add anything to that? No, this is just the gear. This is tools. This is, these are the systems that you are going to use in a combat. But do you know what you are fighting for? Do you, do you know who do you're fighting with or against? Because right. if, you're, if you would like to generate leads, do you know what kind of leads from what clients? Who are your right clients? Because not every lead is the same. So this is so important to know where to address your messaging, how to address your messaging, with what kind of means and tools. So you are going to have really quality in the, in the end of the day. And, and, you know, from a practical standpoint, what it is is you're making a lot of, you know, a bunch of decisions in a structured way in a short period of time. I mean, how I, I've been talking to this construction company for a while, and they've had this issue where they, they feel like they have to solve all of their problems before they can bring anyone in. Eight months ago, they started trying to do that. Literally, we'd have it done in two weeks with their entire team. And they just, they're not, they don't understand it. So enough said. So what I want to do is give you some, some, I'm going to run down a few slides of the five things. And I have a, a paper that I want to, I'll put a link to it in the chat uh, that, that has more detail on each of these five factors. We studied almost a hundred different marketing programs and we were looking for what were the factors that either caused them to fail or that were always present in the success or that were always missing in the failures. It took a couple of years to do it. And we do it as part of our engagement anyway. We're always looking at, well, what did you do before and show us everything you've got and all that stuff. And so we just put it all to get together. And so one of the big things is, and it's, and it's the easiest thing, is to change your mindset, okay? And it's change it away from, from marketing as, as projects to marketing as a process, okay? And this is kind of what that process looks like. And interestingly enough, it's the same process that you use to make decisions in every part of your company. But for some reason, marketing got a pass somewhere along the way, you know, where uh, operations needs to come in and analyze what's happening. Step one, here's what's going on, collecting the data, defining the strategy, right? Executing, testing, measuring, you know, everybody else is doing it, but marketing comes in shooting guns in the air and drinking tequila and going cows with sunglasses, right? I mean, I don't know why they got away with that, but that's, well, in Chick-fil-A's case, it worked really well. Um, but it's just a change of mindset. It isn't a series of projects. It's an iterative process. Um, it starts with the plan. You execute, you test, you measure, you improve over and over again. It's not a series of activities or projects. Hey, yeah, we do marketing. It's uh, we, we, we do website, we have a SEO. Uh, okay, so you have some pieces of marketing. Um, it should be a 360 degree collaboration between sales, marketing, and management. It's one reason Robert and I work together because you know, there's a wall between sales and marketing for some reason, and there shouldn't be. There really needs to be, you know, your salespeople out on the on the front lines, well, more military terms, uh, 
they know what's going on and they need to be feeding that in information to marketing. And when you have a situation where those two, you know, those two silos aren't talking to each other, I mean, what are your odds of, of success? And then, you know, continuous improvement is really the name of the game. You know, working with someone like me or Robert, you're going to increase your chances of being successful, which the adverse of that is you're going to lower the risk of failure, right? Um, and it allows you to engage, you know, so you're going to, you're going to try to get your highest metrics as you can right out of the gate because you did your homework instead of, you know, let's see what sticks, you know, nothing usually sticks by the way. Um, but you, you, you get it, you come out of the gate as high as you can, and then you start moving all those measurements up over time. And pretty soon you're seeing, you know, insanely good metrics, um, but if you're looking at it like, hey, we're going to try this thing for a month. If it doesn't work, we're going to stop. Yeah, you're, you're, it's done. You're done. It's not going to work. So it's a hard truth. You know, we all want to have everything fast. You know, consultants want to promise fast. You know, we do our jobs fast, but the reality is the market is big. It's complex. You're dealing with human behavior. You know, it, there's a bombardment of information that people are trying to process. They block 99.9% .9 of it out. And you need to break through that barrier. And it's just going to take some time. If you have a system, it's going to take less time. If you're just kind of guessing and trying some stuff and doing this and that, it's maybe take forever uh, or, or not at all. So let's throw that out there. Um, there's going to be some hard truths in this. So, and Robert, just jump in because, you know, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to watch the time here. So, so why should you care? All right. Well, this is the deal. How much risk do you want to take? All right. If you're if you're good, if you're like a stunt man, and you want to just try some stuff and spend some money, hey, great, awesome, do that. But just understand, you're taking a lot of risk. So you want a low level of risk? Do you want a medium level of risk? This is how you can figure out how much formality or how much process do you want to invest in? Is how much risk do you want to take, um, or do you want to be this guy? Um, it's up to you. You know. We help clients lean towards the left of that, the least risk. Um, but that's really up to each individual company. So, but I say don't be that guy. This is one of the biggest things I think is the most important thing that you can do is, is survey your customers. Um, whether you do that yourself, not ideal. It's better to have a third party who, you know, does an anonymous survey so your customers can basically say anything they want you know, you stink, you know, whatever it is. Um, and then there's no personal identifiers. So it's just data. Um, but even if, it, if, if circumstances dictate, got to do it yourself, do it. Uh, they're gonna, you know, this confirmation bias is a thing, right? Um, and we all are so close to our companies and we have these really in, ingrained ideas and we may or may not be right. So you wanna make sure you have an update, uh, up-to-date understanding of how they choose one company over another, the criteria you use, they use, how is it ranked? Um, and basically nobody cares about you. Nobody, you know, the only thing that actually matters is that, this guy, right? So. Yeah. There's just a gold mine of information in your with your customers. I always tell people if there's only one thing you can do, do that thing. Know your competition. All right. When's the last time people on this conference went and looked at at four or five of their competitors' websites and dug through them and looked at their message, what they're doing right, what they're not doing right? Uh, used uh, databases and 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 searched and, and went through LinkedIn profiles of their personnel and all that stuff. When when did you do that? It's a rhetorical question. Um, how can you be different? For example, if you haven't done that, what are you different to, uh, from? Right? Um, how do you articulate it? What what's their weakness that you can exploit? Um, and so. By looking at competitors, again, both of these things, customer and competitive, you're getting outside information in to confirm or, or conflict or add to your understanding of the marketplace. And so Sun Tzu says, if you know the enemy and you know yourself, you need not fear the result of 100 battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you'll also suffer a defeat. If you know neither, in other words, you don't have a plan, you haven't talked to your customers, 
If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. So basic, basic research. Let's talk about planning a little bit. I'm going to let Robert lead off with this. <laughs> are we 19 minutes in? Okay, so we are about halfway through. We'll keep the pace going here. Yeah, go on, go on, Pete. Oh, okay. Do you want me to? Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, do you want to run with that one, Robert? Yeah, so it's so important that probably all of you believe that you have the plan, but have you documented the one and have you used that as a communication tool to your employees, to your clients? If not, try to do this. Yeah, if it's just in your head, I like to say you don't have a plan. It doesn't exist. It's a team collaborative process, right? In fact, this works in a number of different ways. The CEO comes in, maybe he holed up in his chateau and he, and he made the plan and he came and he showed it to everybody. Okay, that's not a good process. Or the marketing agency went and made their plan and they didn't include your sales team in that process, okay? It's collaborative. If you're not collaborating, you're probably not gonna get the results. Yeah, you can collaborate, you communicate, and you will have great chances to have the buy-in from everybody. And to have the buy-in, you will have entire team working together with you to the same. That what a great point. Make them part of that process. They're gonna they're gonna feel like, hey, they're listening to me, and then they're invested in it. You know, it, you might not follow everyone's ideas, but at least they had a part in it. That's that's so important. In fact, in our process, we'll actually pull the sales team in a session by themselves without the supervisory or the management team, so those guys can speak completely freely. It's amazing what we hear. Um, and if a lot of you are saying, well, gosh, you know, that's not our core capability. Bring it in. It's not hard. There's a million guys like me and Robert. Um, and uh, that expertise is actually very affordable. It's going to be a lot less money than hiring somebody. Uh, and so bring the expertise in that you need, just like every other part of your business. And not all plans are the same. Um, I've seen a lot of things that said, oh, we have a plan and it is written. Let me show it to you. And it's a spreadsheet of some kind. Um, what we're talking about is a marketing plan and a sales plan, and they are very specific types of documents. And there's really almost an industry standard for what goes in those documents, even though our industry will put anything forward and call it a plan. There really is a standard. Um, and, and so not all plans are the same. And so I love this quote from Dwight Eisenhower, in preparing for battle, I've always found the plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. And I love that because what he's saying is it's the journey of the planning. It isn't the document that happens at the end. That's just you're documenting what happened to the decisions you made, and, and it's probably a good reference. But it's really that you went through this process of asking all the hard questions and, and pushing back on the assumptions within the organization and, and admitting that, you know, we're pretty sure of this, but we're not actually sure of it. Um, and so, and, and let me show you some of the detail level that, that a plan, you know, people say, well, we, we know who our customer is. Do you know it on this level? This is the level that you need. And, and by the way, you'll notice that a lot of these things you can punch into a database. <laughs> That's kind of the idea. Who is that customer? What do they believe? What's your promise? You notice it says beliefs, primary needs, basic promise, pain points. So that's what a customer profile should look like. And so, you know, these are things that, what a plan should look like. So I don't know if anybody recognizes that guy. We'll get to that in a minute. But he's a smart guy. Um, and you got to be committed. And what that means is a unified commitment. And so that everybody is committed to those goals and objectives that you set. They've been part of the process. Unified commitment. It's, and the commitment doesn't look like this. We're going to try these little th few things, and if they work, then we'll do more. Not a commitment. And it's not, this is kind of hard because it's like seems very self-serving, right? No, what's going to happen is it, you, you can't just dip your toe in the water and win the race. It's like building part of the race car, and if we win the race, then we'll build the rest of the car. It doesn't work that way. You do a little bit, you get zero. You have to get up a level of, I, I describe it like a flywheel, a giant flywheel. It takes a certain amount of energy to get it spinning. As it spins, less energy, right? So resources. One way or another, it's going to take resources to go to market, whether those are internal resources. Your, let's say you're a one-person company. You have a choice. Learn everything yourself. Have someone else do it, right? Money, time, labor. 
If you don't have any of those things, you're not going to get there. You're going to be very frustrated. Time. So not a huge amount of time. A good marketing plan can start showing some results in 60 days, 90 days. But I do have people come to me and say, look, we need to double our sales in the next quarter. You know, if I could lie and say, sure, yeah, we could do that. No, no, you can't. Um, it's a big, complicated world out there. You have a complicated business. Uh, it's going to take time. That's where the commitment comes in. You have to be able to run a system for a period of time and measure it. And then you need to be flexible, uh, which seems to belie the plan, right? But the plan has to be flexible, especially, you know, look what happened last year, you know? Uh, the market changes fast and constantly. And so that guy's Peter Drucker. Unless commitment is made, there are no, there are only promises and hopes, but no plans. Okay, and I'm just going to burn through this next slide because I think we're running a little late. So finally, the scientific method is really what marketing is about. You, you start with what you're trying to achieve. What is it? What is our purpose? What do we need to learn? What do we need to do? We find that get more information. We talk to our customers. We talk to our competitors. We do industry data collection, whatever it is, internal information. We start to form our plan and predict our objectives and what can happen and what we're trying to do. What's the answer? Then we start executing and experimenting and trying different things. Sometimes for some companies that might look like a, uh, a focus group or something, but generally smaller companies don't do focus groups. Um, so you, you start to implement step four, and then you analyze data that's coming back and you're measuring, and then you, have, uh, you figure out which things are working, which things aren't, and then you start over again. That's what marketing looks like. I guess sales does too. Um, and he approves. So here's the hard truth. You can either gamble or you can work systematically. Um, and those really are your choices. Um, and it's up to you. I'm not going to judge you if you like gambling. You know, I don't, I don't go to Vegas and gamble. So it's just not my thing. But some people do, I guess. Um, it's up to you how you want to run your business. So I really appreciate uh, being here. And um, if you get tired of gambling, let me know. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to paste a link in the chat right now. The chat will disappear once we hang up. So if you want to copy that out of there, um, that's where you can just go download uh, my paper, Five Factors in High Performance Lead Generation, and it fleshes out these ideas a bit more. So I'm going to turn this over to Robert. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Pete. So I think that we've been able to um, pass it through already. Running the business is not gambling, is not managing by hope, on hope. This is about really having the plan and diligent execution of this plan. plan not by yourselves only, but by your teams. So we are not alone in this comment. Let's move on. So you, you believe that the growth is difficult, that is impossible sometimes for your businesses. You have tried a number of different things. What if faster growing is really possible? What if having the right plans, the right roadmaps is going to make you, uh, give you the likelihoods to really accomplish your goals? And what is that to do this together with the right people in the right seats in your company? Let's go through maybe some uh, actionable insights. I have some quotes, maybe not from those famous pe people, but from very famous people, from mm -hmm. you. So we from Source Acceleration, we run this on a yearly basis and we ask more than 2000 business owners every year about a couple of things just to keep, feel the pulse about the marketing and sales performance uh, of their companies. And this is what we hear. This is what I hear meeting, meeting many of my clients. My sales have been at the same level for the last few years. It's like mission impossible. You can tell me that we can change that. We can move the needle. No, we have tried a number of things. Yes, you can. My sales have been declining. And what can I do right now? Yes, you can pivot that. It's just no. Who is your client? What is your value proposition? What is your plan? It is possible. Move on. All of my sales are referrals. We already touched upon that. It's great to have them because you are going to have more like, uh, you know, a uh, guaranteed client. You are going to have great price, but you don't know when you are going to get them. You don't know from whom. This is very, very uh, uh, reactive way of developing your business. Too much of my annual revenue comes from one client. I have one extreme case I ran across uh, in December last year here in Central Texas. 
the business has been developing fantastically for the last 18 years in the professional services space. And they lost from one month to another, a client which was generating them 80% of the revenue, huge company, I cannot mention the name. And now what? All the companies in danger right now, what should they do? They are in panic. So concentration of your clients is really, could be re very painful. I can't seem to find the right salespeople. There are no salespeople in the market. There are, but we need to attract the right salespeople and we need to make them stay. And they need to see the value, the purpose uh, uh, being with your company. So let's move on. Let's see how to, how to manage this. So some observation in statistics, uh, six out of 10. So 60% of the companies don't have individual sales quotas set. We complain on such salespeople, but we don't set our expectations on them. 80% of us, we say that we don't have sales forecasting tool. So all of this is kind of voodoo magic in the end of the quarter, you know, hocus pocus or hope uh, that it is going to be success or not. Forecasting is a must. Must. 90% of the small and mid-sized businesses, they don't have any customer relationship management system. It sounds maybe, you know, very scary, CRM, customer uh, relationship management system. It's a very simple thing. You can have it on a cloud and you can pay for that just 50 bucks per month. And you are going to have fantastic tool to drive long-term your businesses. Well, let me add this too, for marketing, from marketing standpoint, it's all about centralized data. You know, how many times have you seen a salesperson leave and take half the company's data with them because all of their contacts were in Outlook? You know, centralized data. And that's Absolutely. all about the CRM. And 90% of the businesses we were talking to don't have a compensation plan that incentivizes the behavior they are asking for. They are just looking at dollars people have to bring. We have to look also at how we make those dollars, what activities are behind that. And again, to do that, you need to know what is your plan, what is your targeted audience, what is your value proposition, how to bring those dollars. So there are, all of us probably, we do that uh, quite often, our credit score checks. There is something like a marketing score check or sales agility score. And you are going to, you can have just five, seven minutes spent on this, and you are going to have fantastic report with very actionable insights, telling you what is good in your company and what is maybe less good, what to prioritize and maybe what to don't prioritize, not to create the noise. So uh, you are welcome to go through this. It's just going to take you five to seven minutes and you are going to have pretty nice answers about what is your really sales strategy today? What is your performance management? What is your sales methodology? And do you have the right organization and right talents on your team? So I really strongly advise you to, to have that. And a couple of insights, really plan for growth. Have detailed sales business plan. Are you really unique or you are like everybody? Be unique, that is my advice, because if you are going to be like everybody, it is going to be gambling and your contribution margins is going to suffer a lot. As Pete have said, do you know your competitors? Can you learn anything good from them? If not, try to look at that. It's the cheapest way of, of, of getting better. Yeah, Our, you, you, I always say unique from what? Hmm. Do you know who are your right customers? Because I can tell you, not every customer you have should stay with you. There are customers you should avoid. Do you know what customers you should avoid? And do you know how to bring more your right customers? And again, you need to know what is your value proposition, why you are different and uh, uh, what is your plan? And set very simple, but set, set smart goals for your business. It doesn't need to be anything sophisticated. This just need to be smart goals. Simple, measurable, attainable, realistic, and embedded in time. And then if you have any salespeople, really incentivize also the correct behaviors. Please monitor sales activities. Please make sure that the sales compensation plans are really motivating to rise the bar and to get to the new, to, to the new levels. And if you are going to have good compensation plan, it is going to be one of the tools which is going to attract and make to stay really good talents with your teams. Want to sell more? 
really document your sales process because it is so extremely important because your sales pro process should mimic the buyer process. You need to understand again your clients, they buy differently. So that's that's why this is so important what Pete has shown you in this uh, Excel snippet uh, uh, taken from the bigger document. You really need to understand who you sell to and how they buy. And your selling process should really mimic that. That will increase the chances of your success going forward. Uh, yes. Very often we are we oh, are just sorry. complaining that uh, we are not able to move the opportunities through the sales funnel or we are not closing enough. That is really related to lack of understanding what your selling process should be. If you have that right, if you know what stages you need to have, if you know where to move from one stage to another, and if you know what kind of sales enablement tools you should use, I can guarantee you that deals are going to go through the funnel with the higher speed and you're going to, to have much higher uh, conversion rates. I love asking people to draw their sales process on the whiteboard when I first meet them. That's always an entertaining exercise. Have very simple, but have sales metrics. And sales metrics is not only the order book in dollars. Sales metrics is also, for instance, depending on the number of businesses, how many visits to the right clients have you have you performed? How many quotations do you have right in play, out, out in place? How many uh, demonstrations of your products or service have you had in place? So by doing this, you are able to uh, identify what are the good behaviors, what are the bad behaviors and performances. And uh, actually what is extremely important in this maybe four or five KPIs that you are going to have illustrating your marketing and sales efforts is that you will have maybe one which is going to illustrate you the past. This is your orders in dollars. But your orders is the effect of the de decisions you have taken or maybe not taken two, three months before. You need to look at the leading indicators. So you are able to pull the le lever uh, well in advance. So uh, your success is not going to be at risk in two months from now. And as Pete said, that is extremely so important. Your customer relationship management system is the single source, source of truth, source of truth. And don't allow that your customers are really customers of your salespeople. They are your customers. And this tool is going to help you with this. Let's move on, Pete. Yeah. Do you have, do you have, would you like to have a sales guy to set you up your, the charter of your accounts in your book? Uh, in your, in your sales ledger or in your, in your purchase ledger? Probably not. Would you like to have your CPI to set you up your sales process or marketing process? Probably not. So have the really person who is responsible for sales or responsible for the marketing to run that effort. Um, and really make sure that these people have spent most of the time, if not all of the time, on those specific uh, sales or marketing efforts. My advice when it comes to uh, looking at people you are going to hire, spend a lot of time understanding whether these people are bringing you the right attitudes. Because you know what? When you, when you are maybe in roofing business, maybe in HVC business, maybe in some other professional services or construction, you can teach them all of this. What is important when it comes to setting up the roof, calculating the, 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 the budget and so forth. But you will never teach people on their passion, on attitudes, on engagement. Hire for those. Hire for attitudes first. You can teach the rest. I have taken that, those lessons hard myself. So this is my, my really recommendation to everybody. And as we already said with Pete, CRM, CRM, CRM. This is a very simple thing, very affordable thing nowadays, and it will solve you a number of problems and actually will help you to reaching your goals. Yeah, let's, let's move on. And sales, it is important, as Pete also said, that the plan is not important, really, is the process how to get to the, to, through, through this plan to, to illustrate something. But then it is important to execute. And execution, this is also about following up and following through. And this cannot happen just on a quarterly basis. My advice is just spend 10 to 15 minutes and go through everything what has been said that we should do and we should plan to do when it comes to marketing and sales effort. Do it systematically with every team, team member and make sure that they are also accountable. So you are not the only one who have maybe the sleepless nights because something doesn't work nicely in your company. 
you have the team which is going to be with, with you for both good and bad times. Yeah, let's move on. So really, have a plan, have the vision, try to inspire the entire team with your vision. So document and com communicate that. Have a plan, the roadmap, how to get there. This is really possible. And then if you have the right people in the right seats, this is like a mission, you know, 100% possible, not impossible to, to uh, attain your jobs. We are working with so many clients and I can tell you, there is no situations that we cannot help any businesses. If you believe that you are the only one and your business cannot be uh, pivoted and you cannot grow, I can tell you that this is the positive, I think, feedback. No, you are wrong. Everything can grow if you have the plan and you know where to go. So if you like, in these documents we are going to send after this presentation, you're going to have the link for this uh, free uh, sales agility assessment. Try to do that. It is going to take you five to seven minutes. You are going to have fantastic insightful report and you're going to see uh, how good you are and maybe what areas to focus on. So really urge you to do that. Thank you very much. And here's the resources. It's a lot of resources. So we are going to have that uh, for free afterwards. Thanks a lot, guys. That was an awesome presentation. A lot of very specific takeaways. Um, we have time for some Q&A real quick. Uh, if you have a question, put it in the chat box. Uh, Allison will bring them up. I'll, I'll ask the first question for both of you gentlemen. If uh, somebody on the call or if somebody on the call knows somebody who wants to get your services as a team, uh, Pete and Robert together, what would be the process? Is there like an, an organizational meeting that you guys would do? What would it cost them? Can you expand on that real quick? You know, Robert and I have talked about this, and, and we think hiring both of us at once is an awful lot to chew up off, you know, uh, to chew on. So, you know, I would say that if you feel like your your problems are, are very sales oriented, just reach out to Robert if you think they're real marketing oriented. Uh, uh, and, and that includes, you know, tactics. I mean, if you're if you're if you're struggling with your website and that just needs to be fixed, we're a full stack marketing firm. So just reach out. We're very easy to find. And that's that's how I would say, Robert, do you have any any thoughts? Yeah, you agree if with you are that? not certain whether your problems are in marketing or sales, just reach out to uh, one of us and we are going to have very quick discovery with you. And we are going to say, OK, probably even if I'm from sales, you should start with marketing because the problem is somewhere in lead generation. And then I can hand over from from Pete and give it back to him, because let's be honest, working in sales and marketing, this is like a continuous pendulum. This is not one either or this is both. And it's going to be like, you know, moving, you know, from one to, to the other side. So take one of us, if you are not certain, we are going to make this quick discovery with you and we are going to build the plan. Start with marketing or start with sales. Well, and I, I throw this out too. Um, if you do want us both to come and do, do you know, and it's like, it's like, I'm not sure what the deal is. All I know is our revenue is flat uh, and we're, what you know, it's not working. Yeah, we're, I, I think I speak for Robert. We're, we're happy to come together and, and yes, learn absolutely. as much as we can. Absolutely. And if we're not a match, we'll we'll find we'll we'll help you find some some path. Absolutely. One way or another. Thanks for the question, Steve. Any other questions, Allison? What CRM do you recommend? <laughs> Depends depending on on your specific situation. There are probably around one thousand right now available. Uh, there are of course better ones and worse ones for you. Uh, if you are in a smaller businesses, probably I will not impose on you uh, something like a salesforce.com, which is the brand. Uh, there are very light ones, depending if you would like to have both sales and marketing in one CRM system, if you would like to run campaigns, if you have maybe projects, because that is related to your professional services, if you would like to have maybe some very simple ERP functions into this. There are probably a dozen I could pick from, depending on your businesses, but it has to be really for your business, catered for your, for your businesses. But uh, we also need to uh, really cater for the right processes in that CRM system, and it should be you no know, cost efficient for you and needed for your team. So probably I will pick you know one of the twelve that normally I, I work with. Pete, maybe you would like to add anything? You know, I know I have my favorite right now, which is really inexpensive and simple. It's called Pipe Drive, and um, that's just the one I've used. And I think I've used. I mean, I started using. Remember Act. I use ACT in like 1990. 
Um, and we've used, you know, all different ones. Um, we did find that, and, and we've also, we actually have helped some companies implement their CRMs. We don't do a lot of that anymore, but the thing that we found is like Salesforce too complicated. And so we're always looking for those things that are going to have a high adoption rate within your company because it doesn't alter the way that people have to work. You know, you really have to adapt to Salesforce, I think, not the other way around. Um, and so, you know, and if you're a big company, uh, Salesforce is probably going to be great for you because you'll have a whole team to support it. But I think Pipedrive is one. What, what was yeah, uh, that? Uh, there's uh, another Zoho. one. Yeah. HubSpot yeah. and Zoho. Yeah. Zoho. There, there are many of them. Really, it depends on your on your specific situation, on your company, on the clients you would like to have, and the uh, band of the services you provide. We, all of them are more or less in the same price range. It is about, you know, really choosing the right one because as Pete said, this is not about having this furniture in your room, but this is really using. So this is about adoption in the end of the day. Any other questions, Allison? I don't see any. If you have a question, you can also raise your hand and we could mm -hmm. just double check, make sure if you're not having chat. Bob, we'll unmute you, Bob, real quick. Allison, can you unmute Bob? Yeah. Hold on here. Yeah, just for uh, both Robert and Pete, if you would maybe share with, with the uh, audience here on the types of businesses that you've serviced, because I know, Pete, if, if people haven't gone to your website yet, I mean, uh, you guys uh, both covered a lot of diverse type businesses, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. We, we, we generally stick to B2B. You know, back in the day, we helped Harley Davidson. That was a little bit of an outlier. Uh, uh, we work with companies, you know, even smaller companies, but mostly professional services, um, technology, software, um, manufacturing. Um, I know, well, Robert will give his list of industries that are a little bit different than mine. Uh, education, media, entertainment. Those are our things, and uh, if recently, anybody wants, I can send a, a one sheet. Hmm? And very recently, even pet industry from me. So this is really a variety of businesses and all spectrum. But as, as Pete has said, predominantly, we try to focus with Pete on the B2B businesses. A lot of experience in construction, professional services, manufacturing as well. You know, when you do it for 30 years, it's like, boy, every, I think, you know, there's so many industries. Uh, healthcare is one I left out, which we have, you know, a lot of healthcare, pharmaceuticals. Um, so, you know, but the ones that we just focus on a, a, a smaller list, because those are the ones we have the most experience in. So. By saying this, I think what we try to say is not only that we are subject matters experts in all of your businesses and verticals you work with, but probably the biggest learning we have is that there is no silver bullet that works the same way in every industry. There is no uh, magical pill. So we know where to start, where to finish, what is going to be next in your specific businesses. Well, I like to say that I actually don't know anything. Uh, you know, what I know is a process and I know what questions to ask. And, and I do bring all of those assignments and all of those companies and all of those situations to the table. And I'll be just frank. Please, if there's someone in this chat that has a new problem I haven't seen, I would love to work on that. Uh, but but basically, it's it really is the same list of, of problems and 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 things across different industries. Um, and so it's really about the process. You know, the process really leads you to the answers. You know, we don't like this is a thing that I try to people get confused. You know, consultants tell us what we already know. Or could tell us they tell us what what to do. Actually, I don't. I work with you to collaboratively figure out what to do based on data. You know, um, I don't I don't know anything in particular. Um, I just know the process. Yeah. 